in the film Fallen Angel. Each actor was carefully chosen to bring depth and authenticity to their roles. Director Otto Preminger sought out Dana Andrews for the leading role, drawn by his strong presence and versatility. Andrews, known for his work in Laura, was cast as Eric Stanton, a manipulative drifter. For the role of Stanton's love interest, Preminger turned to Alice Fay, an accomplished singer and actress. Fay, who had initially planned to retire, was persuaded to return for this film. She brought a warmth and vulnerability to the character of June Mills, captivating audiences with her charm. The film's antagonist, Stanton's rival for June's affections, was portrayed by Linda Darnell. Darnell, a seasoned actress, was selected for her ability to convey both strength and insecurity. Her character, Stella, added a layer of complexity to the film's love triangle. The supporting cast was equally crucial to the film's success. Charles Bickford, an experienced character actor, was cast as Mark Judd, a wealthy businessman with a hidden past. His chemistry with Faye added depth to their shared scenes. Another notable performance came from Anne Revere as Clara Mills, June's wise and supportive aunt. Revere's portrayal added a sense of stability and guidance to the film's turbulent relationships. The casting of Fallen Angel was a testament to Preminger's ability to recognize and utilize the unique talents of each actor. The resulting film was a compelling exploration of love, manipulation, and redemption. Otto Preminger, the director of Fallen Angel, brought a unique vision to film noir. Known for his bold and unyielding style, Preminger approached this movie with a keen eye for detail and a desire to push boundaries. Influenced by German Expressionism, Preminger's visual style was characterized by dramatic lighting, unusual camera angles, and long takes. He often used these techniques to create a sense of tension and unease, perfectly suited for the dark and morally ambiguous world of Fallen Angel. Preminger's collaborative approach with his cast and crew was also noteworthy. He worked closely with cinematographer Joseph Lachelle to create the film's distinctive visual style. Their collaboration resulted in striking images that added depth and complexity to the narrative. Preminger also had a reputation for being demanding and exacting, pushing his actors to give their best performances. For Fallen Angel, he cast Alice Faye, Linda Darnell, and Dana Andrews, all of whom delivered strong performances under his direction. Furthermore, Preminger's innovative use of sound and music in Fallen Angel added another layer to the film's atmosphere. The director worked closely with composer David Raxon to create a haunting score that underscored the film's themes of desire, betrayal, and redemption. In summary, Preminger's directorial vision for Fallen Angel was marked by his unique visual style, collaborative approach, and innovative use of sound and music. His unyielding dedication to his craft resulted in a film that remains a classic of the film noir genre. In 1945, Fallen Angel graced the silver screen featuring the talented Dana Andrews. This movie is a roller coaster of emotions with many surprising and memorable moments. One scene that stands out is when Eric Stanton, played by Andrews, has a life-changing realization. This moment left a lasting impact on me, showcasing Andrews' impressive acting skills. Now, we'd love to hear from you. What's your favorite memory or personal experience related to this classic? Share your stories and memories in the comments below. As for me, I've always admired Andrew's performance in Fallen Angel. His ability to portray a complex character with depth and nuance is truly remarkable. So, don't forget to share your thoughts and experiences related to this timeless film. We can't wait to hear from you. In the 1940s, the movie industry was undergoing significant changes. The film Fallen Angel is a testament to this period's evolution with its innovative set design and logistical approaches. The set design for Fallen Angel was a character in itself reflecting the film's noir style. The movie's opening scene showcases a bustling bus station, a perfect depiction of the post-war America. Art directors Lyle R. Wheeler and Leland Fuller created a realistic environment using forced perspective techniques, making the set appear larger than it was. The film was primarily shot on sound stages in Los Angeles. However, the production team faced logistical challenges when filming exterior scenes. To overcome this, they used a process called traveling mat, a precursor to the modern green screen. This technique allowed them to superimpose actors onto pre-shot backgrounds, creating a seamless blend of reality and fiction. One notable location in Fallen Angel is the quaint town of Walton's Peak. In reality, this was a constructed set at the 20th Century Fox Studios. The set was so detailed that it even had a functioning water tower, which added to the authenticity of the scene. 
Despite these advancements, the production of Fallen Angel was not without its challenges. The tight shooting schedule and the intricate set designs often led to long working hours for the cast and crew. However, they persevered, creating a classic film that continues to resonate with audiences today. In 1945, a classic film noir titled Fallen Angel graced the silver screen. The movie, directed by Otto Preminger, showcases a captivating narrative that keeps audiences on the edge of their seats. The film features a talented cast, including Alice Fay, who plays the role of Stella, a woman with a heart of gold. Fay, born on May 5, 1915, began her career as a vocalist for radio shows before transitioning to acting. Her co-star, Dana Andrews, portrays the character of Eric Stanton, a drifter who finds himself in a web of deceit and danger. Andrews, born on January 1, 1999, gained recognition for his work in various film noir productions. Fallen Angel tells the story of Eric Stanton, who arrives in a small town and becomes entangled in a love triangle with Stella and June Mills, played by Linda Darnell. Darnell, born on October 16, 1923, began her acting career at a young age and quickly became a household name. The film's plot revolves around Stanton's attempts to woo Stella for her wealth, while also pursuing a romantic relationship with June. However, his plans take a dark turn when Stella is found dead and Stanton becomes the prime suspect. The movie's cinematography is noteworthy, with its use of shadows and light to create a moody atmosphere. The film score, composed by David Raxon, adds to the tension and drama of the storyline, Fallen Angel is a classic example of the film noir genre, with its complex characters, intricate plot, and moody cinematography. The film is a must-watch for anyone interested in classic cinema, and a testament to the talent of its cast and crew. The creation of a film score and soundtrack is a meticulous process that significantly contributes to the narrative and emotional tone. In the case of the 1945 film, Fallen Angel, the music plays a pivotal role in enhancing the story's complexity and emotional depth. Composer Roy Webb, known for his work on over 200 films, was tasked with creating the score for Fallen Angel. Webb's approach was to craft music that subtly yet effectively accentuated the film's shifting moods and themes. He achieved this by employing a diverse range of musical styles and techniques, from lush romantic strings to suspenseful jazz motifs. One notable aspect of Webb's score is the use of leitmotifs, recurring musical themes associated with specific characters or ideas. For instance, the character of June Mills, portrayed by Linda Darnell, is often accompanied by a hauntingly beautiful melody that underscores her vulnerability and inner turmoil. The soundtrack also features several popular songs of the era, carefully selected to complement the narrative. One such song is, I'm Glad I Waited For You, performed by Martha Mears, which serves as a poignant refrain throughout the film. The lyrics, which touch on themes of patience, love, and longing, resonate with the character's emotional journeys. Interestingly, the film's director, Otto Preminger, initially wanted to use existing songs for the soundtrack. However, Webb convinced him to commission original music, resulting in a more cohesive and impactful score. In crafting the music for Fallen Angel Webb, and his team deftly wove together various musical elements to create a score that not only complements the narrative but also stands on its own as a compelling piece of work. The result is a soundtrack that deepens the film's emotional resonance and enriches the overall viewing experience. In Otto Preminger's Fallen Angel, the opening credits grab the audience's attention. They are displayed on road signs passed by a bus, a technique Preminger used in his later films as well. The writer of the novel the movie is based on, Marty Holland, was born Mary Havenstein and sold the rights to her novel for a substantial sum while working as a typist at Paramount. Interestingly, the actor Matthew Stymie Beard, who played a role in the film, is buried at Evergreen Cemetery in Los Angeles. The film's title, Fallen Angel, is based on a novel of the same name, and its writer, Marty Holland, was paid a significant amount for the rights to her work. Preminger's unique approach to opening credits, Holland's successful sale of her novel's rights, and Beard's final resting place all contribute to the behind-the-scenes story of this classic film. Meanwhile, the iconic scenes of the movie Fallen Angel have left an indelible mark on the audience. One such scene is when Eric Stanton, played by Dana Andrews, first meets Stella, played by Alice Fay, at the Seaside Town's diner. The direction by Otto Preminger is masterful, as he uses the camera angles to create a sense of intimacy and tension between the two characters. Andrew's performance is equally impressive, as he brings a sense of vulnerability 
and longing to the role. The cinematography by Ernest Laszlo is noteworthy as he captures the stark contrast between the bleak, rainy surroundings and the warm golden glow of the diner's interior. The lighting is particularly effective in highlighting the emotional state of the characters as it creates a sense of unease and foreboding. As the scene progresses, the tension between Stanton and Stella builds and the audience is left wondering what will happen next. In an interview, Preminger discussed the importance of this scene, stating, I wanted to create a sense of unease and tension from the moment Stanton and Stella meet. I wanted the audience to feel like something is not quite right, and that's what makes the scene so effective. Andrews echoed Preminger's sentiments, saying, I think the key to the scene is the way the camera moves and the way the lighting is used. It creates a sense of intimacy and vulnerability that draws the audience in. Another iconic scene from the movie is the finale, where Stanton and Stella's relationship reaches a boiling point. The direction is equally masterful, as Preminger uses the setting to create a sense of claustrophobia and desperation. The performances are equally impressive, as Andrews and Faye bring a sense of urgency and desperation to their roles. The cinematography is also noteworthy, as Laszlo uses the rain-soaked streets to create a sense of chaos and disorder. As the scene reaches its climax, the audience is left on the edge of their seats, wondering what will happen next. In the 1945 film, Fallen Angel, a connection can be drawn between the leading actor, Dana Andrews, and the set design of a later production. When producer Gloria Monti and production designer Hub Braden were discussing the stage set's wall color for the series Bright Promise in 1969, they considered a rose tint for the walls. This choice was specifically made to enhance the facial makeup of the series star Andrews, who was 60 at the time. Braden later used the same color scheme for the CBS TV series Murder, she wrote, to create a more youthful appearance for actress Angela Lansbury. The movie also features a subtle connection to the 1944 film Laura. When Eric, played by Dana Andrews, stands near a portrait of a woman in June's house, the same dreamy sounding music from Laura plays. This music is heard when Andrews' character wanders around Laura's apartment, getting drunk, and continuously staring at her portrait as well as when he wakes up to see Jean Tierney's Laura standing there for the first time. Additionally, the opening scene of Fallen Angel features Camel cigarettes, which were produced by the R.J. Reynolds Tobacco Company. These cigarettes were the first of the rolled and packaged variety to become commonplace in the U.S. Released in 1945, Fallen Angel quickly captured audiences with its gripping narrative and complex characters. The film noir genre, to which this movie belongs, was already popular at the time, but this particular production brought a fresh perspective. The movie resonated with post-war audiences, who found solace in its exploration of themes such as moral ambiguity, deceit, and redemption. The characters' struggles mirrored those of the society trying to rebuild itself after the war. This connection made the film more relatable and engaging for viewers. Fallen Angel also had a significant influence on pop culture. Its innovative storytelling and visual style inspired many future filmmakers. The movie's iconic depiction of film noir settings and costumes became a blueprint for subsequent productions in the genre. Moreover, the film contributed to discussions on relevant social and cultural themes. It challenged traditional gender roles by portraying strong, independent women who were not afraid to assert themselves. This representation was a departure from the typical portrayal of women in cinema at the time and sparked conversations about gender equality. In addition, the movie explored the concept of identity and the mask people wear to navigate society. This theme resonated with audiences who were grappling with their own identities in the aftermath of the war. The film's exploration of these issues added depth and complexity to its narrative, making it a compelling watch. In conclusion, Fallen Angel left a lasting impact on both the film industry and society. Its resonance with post-war audiences, influence on pop culture, and contribution to discussions on relevant social and cultural themes make it a significant cultural artifact. In the 1945 film, Fallen Angel, Bruce Cabot's character has an interesting past. According to a source, he was previously married to Grace Mary Mather Smith, an actress, and they had a daughter born in 1929, Jennifer Dubrack. The couple divorced sometime in or before 1933. It is speculated that Grace Mary Mather Smith is the same person as Grace Smith, an actress who appeared in a few films during the late 1920s and early 1920s and early 1930s. Hal Talia Farrow, who also stars in the movie, had an intriguing journey before becoming an actor. 
His first job outside of his family's ranch was on a cattle drive for rancher John B. Kendrick. He later worked as a wrangler on Universal's ranch after settling in Los Angeles. Linda Darnell, another actress in the film, went the extra mile to prepare for her role. She spent a week working as a waitress in the Fox Studio Commissary to get into character. In this classic, the filmmakers and actors took their jobs seriously, ensuring that every detail was attended to, even if it meant working as a waitress to prepare for a role. Fallen Angel, a 1945 film noir directed by Otto Preminger, received mixed reviews upon its release. Some critics praised the movie for its suspenseful plot and strong performances, while others criticized it for its convoluted storyline and lack of likable characters. The New York Times' Bosley Crowther was somewhat critical of the film, writing that it was not one of Mr. Preminger's best and that the plot was too involved and too implausible. However, he did acknowledge the excellent performances of the cast, particularly Dana Andrews and Alice Faye. On the other hand, Variety magazine gave the film a positive review, calling it a top-notch melodrama with a taut, driving story and superlative performances. The review also highlighted the excellent cinematography and snappy dialogue. Despite the mixed reviews, Fallen Angel was nominated for two Academy Awards Best Music, scoring of a dramatic or comedy picture, and Best Sound, recording. While the film did not win in either category, the nominations themselves were a testament to the hard work and talent of those involved in the production. The nominations and positive reviews from some critics helped to boost the film's profile and attract audiences. Today, Fallen Angel is considered a classic of the film noir genre and continues to be studied and enjoyed by film enthusiasts around the world. Involvement in a critically acclaimed film like Fallen Angel can have a significant impact on the careers of those involved. For the actors, a strong performance in a successful film can lead to increased recognition and future job opportunities. For the director and other behind-the-scenes personnel, critical acclaim can help to establish their reputation and credibility in the industry. In the case of Fallen Angel, the film's mixed reception may have been a disappointment at the time, but the positive reviews and award nominations have helped to ensure its lasting legacy as a classic of the film noir genre. In the world of filmmaking, it's not uncommon for directors to work with the same crew on multiple projects. Such was the case with Otto Preminger, who utilized much of the crew from Laura for his next film, Fallen Angel, made just a year later. Despite this, Preminger often claimed to have a poor memory, particularly for the films he made as a contract director at 20th Century Fox. In the 1970s, he even admitted to forgetting everything about Fallen Angel, only to stumble upon it on television years later and find it interesting, despite not remembering who committed the murder in the film. The film also marked a significant moment in the career of actress Alice Faye. After giving what she believed to be one of her best dramatic performances in Fallen Angel, Faye was devastated when Daryl F. Zanuck, the head of 20th Century Fox, edited the film to favor newcomer Linda Darnell. Feeling undervalued and frustrated, Faye walked away from the studio and didn't return for 16 years. In the end, Fallen Angel serves as a reminder of the politics and power dynamics that often play out behind the scenes in Hollywood, as well as the impact that these decisions can have on the careers and lives of those involved. In the making of Fallen Angel, the film's director, Otto Preminger, was known for his demanding style. He often pushed actors to their limits, seeking raw and authentic performances. Dana Andrews, who played the lead role, even revealed that Preminger had slapped him during a scene to elicit a more genuine reaction. The film's leading lady, Linda Darnell, faced her own challenges on set. Known for her beauty, Darnell was often typecast in glamorous roles. However, for Fallen Angel, she was required to play a more down-to-earth character. To help her get into the role, Preminger reportedly had Darnell's glamorous trailer replaced with a simple one, hoping to strip away her usual Hollywood persona. Behind the scenes, the film's screenwriter, Harry Kleiner, had a unique method of working. He would often write scenes in longhand on yellow legal pads, then pass them to Preminger for review. This collaborative process led to numerous rewrites and adjustments even during filming. Despite the challenges, the cast and crew formed a close-knit community. Alice Faye, who played a supporting role, was known for her kindness and generosity. She often brought homemade treats to the set, sharing them with her co-stars and crew members. The film's cinematographer Joseph Lachelle was instrumental in creating the film's distinctive noir style. He used high contrast lighting and dramatic shadows to enhance the film's tense atmosphere. 
Lachelle's work on Fallen Angel earned him an Academy Award nomination. In post-production, the film's editor, Louis Leffler, faced a daunting task. He had to condense Kleiner's lengthy script into a tight, fast-paced narrative. Leffler's skillful editing helped to maintain the film's suspenseful pace, keeping audiences on the edge of their seats. Despite the challenges, Fallen Angel remains a classic example of film noir, a testament to the dedication and talent of its cast and crew. In the 1945 film, Fallen Angel, Alan Howland portrays Joe Ellis, a con artist partner to Professor Madley, played by John Carradine. Interestingly, Howland has a more significant role with more lines than Carradine, yet he remains uncredited, a common practice in those days. Adding to the cast's unique connections, both Dana Andrews and Charles Bickford were born on New Year's Day. As the story unfolds, Eric, played by Dana Andrews, and June, portrayed by Alice Fay, exit a movie theater and walk past a Rexall pharmacy. Coincidentally, less than a year after the film's release, Fay began co-starring on a weekly radio show with her husband, Phil Harris, sponsored by Rexall. This classic film, Fallen Angel, offers an engaging narrative with intriguing behind-the-scenes details. Fallen Angel, released in 1945, is a classic film noir that has left an indelible mark on the film industry. As a precursor to this genre, it set the stage for many future films. The movie's intricate storyline and captivating characters have inspired numerous filmmakers, even today. This classic showcased the versatility of its lead actor, Dana Andrews, who portrayed a drifter entangled in a web of deceit. His performance resonated with audiences and influenced future leading men in similar roles. The film's director, Otto Preminger, demonstrated his prowess in creating suspenseful atmospheres and exploring complex themes, which became hallmarks of film noir. Fallen Angel's influence transcended its time, leaving a lasting legacy in the film world. Its innovative use of lighting and shadow paved the way for the distinctive visual style associated with film noir. Additionally, the movie's exploration of morally ambiguous characters and their motivations added depth to the genre, inspiring filmmakers to delve deeper into the human psyche. The film's impact can be seen in subsequent noir films like Double Indemnity and The Postman Always Rings Twice. Even contemporary movies like Chinatown and La Confidential bear traces of Fallen Angel's influence. These films continue to captivate audiences with their complex narratives, morally ambiguous characters, and atmospheric visuals, elements that were first masterfully combined in Fallen Angel. In essence, Fallen Angel is more than just a movie, it's a stepping stone in the evolution of film noir. Its influence continues to resonate, inspiring filmmakers to explore the darker side of human nature and create captivating cinematic experiences. This classic has truly etched its place in film history. In 1945, a film called Fallen Angel was made with a budget of $1,075,000. The movie features a stormy relationship between Dana Andrews and Linda Darnell. Interestingly, the two actors would reunite 12 years later in the cult film Zero Hour, where they would play a couple on the brink of separation. The actress Alice Faye was initially hesitant to take on the role in Fallen Angel. She had rejected over 30 scripts before finally accepting this one, hoping it would be another Laura. Unfortunately, her best scenes were cut from the final edit, which ultimately led to the end of her long-term association with Fox. This classic film has a fascinating background, with its actors and production history adding to its allure. In the 1945 film Fallen Angel, the exterior of the Rexall drugstore was actually Watson's Drug in Orange, California. Interestingly, this same location was used in Tom Hanks's That Thing You Do in 1996. The actress Alice Fay, who appeared in the movie, was deeply disappointed with the final cuts made by Daryl F. Zanuck. Her best scenes, which were at the beginning of the film, were removed to save time and focus on the more intriguing character of Linda Darnell. This led to Fay ending her long-term contract with 20th Century Fox, and she didn't make another film for nearly two decades. Matthew Stymie Beard, who also appeared in the movie, shares a unique birthday with his father. Matthew Sr. both were born on New Year's Day. This classic film has many interesting stories behind it, and it remains a notable piece of film history. The movie's impact can still be seen today, as it continues to inspire filmmakers and entertain audiences. In the movie Fallen Angel, director Otto Preminger would later collaborate with actors Dana Andrews and Bruce Cabot in the film In Harm's Way. Twenty years later, Dorothy Adams, who played a supporting role as Stella's neighbor, had previously worked with Dana Andrews and Laura, 
and the best years of our lives. She was also a surprise guest on This Is Your Life, honoring Dana Andrews in 1973. Before becoming a successful actor, Dana Andrews had a variety of jobs, including driving a school bus, working at a gas station, and picking fruit. He was rejected by every film studio and production company he applied to, including the Pasadena Playhouse. However, after taking singing lessons, he decided to give the Pasadena Playhouse another try and was accepted. His first role at Pasadena was as a spear carrier in a William Shakespeare drama. In the movie Fallen Angel, Adele Jurgens, who played Stella, was laid to rest at Oakwood Memorial Park in Chatsworth, Los Angeles County, California. She can be found in the Pioneer section, Lot 553. Grave 1. Following the film's release, the Lux Radio Theater broadcast a 60-minute CBS radio adaptation on June 17, 1946, with Linda Darnell reprising her role. The original soundtrack featured Alice Faye singing slowly, but this scene was later deleted. In the final cut, Dick Hames sang the ballad on the jukebox while Linda Darnell worked behind the counter. Hames' 1945 Decca recording is included in the 23 CD box, set the golden years of Dick Hames by Jasmine. In the 1945 film, Fallen Angel, Dana Andrews delivered a memorable performance, marking his second of five collaborations with director Otto Preminger. Years later, Andrews found himself as the lead in the NBC daytime soap opera, Bright Promise, in 1969. He portrayed Thomas Boswell, the president of Bancroft College, where students were groomed to be future leaders. Interestingly, Andrews, a trained opera singer, was able to showcase his vocal skills in this series, unlike in his film career. Unfortunately, Andrews was unexpectedly fired from Bright Promise after about a year. His character was written out, and Anne Jeffries took over his role. NBC also replaced the show's producer, Dick Dunn, with Jerry Layton. The series was canceled the following year, replaced by a game show. Ironically, the cast and crew have returned to Peyton Place, which replaced Fallen Angel's spin-off, faced the same fate in 1974. Towards the end of Fallen Angel, June recites a poem about the titular Fallen Angel, Eric. The poem, not attributed to any famous poet, conveys the message that only love can lift the Fallen Angel and that two people together can enter paradise. This classic film leaves a lasting impression with its thought-provoking themes and captivating storyline. In the film Fallen Angel, Alice Faye had a falling out with the studio after seeing a rough cut. She felt that Otto Preminger's editing favored newcomer Linda Darnell over her, diminishing the impact of her performance. Upset, Faye left the studio, driving off the lot and throwing her dressing room key to the security guard. She vowed never to work for the studio again, Dana Andrews, on the other hand, provided the commentary for the film's trailer. The jukebox at Pops joined in the movie as a 1939 Seberg Symphonia Vogue, adding to the film's historical accuracy. Despite the tension behind the scenes, Fallen Angel remains a classic film noir, known for its intriguing plot and memorable characters. In the 1945 film, Fallen Angel, Dana Andrews, and Anne Revere shared the screen for the third time, having previously appeared together in the Song of Bernadette and Deep Waters. The following year, Andrews starred alongside Dick Hames in State Fair, with Hames singing slowly, a song that would also feature in Fallen Angel. Interestingly, Alice Fay, who turned down a role in State Fair's 1945 version, appeared in its 1962 remake. John Carradine, who played a memorable role in Fallen Angel, was considered for the part of Big Daddy in the Broadway production of Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. Although other commitments prevented him from taking on the role, he did play it in a 1977 Los Angeles production. Tennessee Williams had reportedly written the part of Big Daddy with Carradine in mind, highlighting the actor's enduring impact on the industry. Did Fallen Angel leave a lasting impression on you? We'd love to hear about your personal experiences and memories related to this classic film. How did it affect you, and what impact did it have on your perspective of cinema? Perhaps you were captivated by the storyline, or maybe the performances of the actors left a mark on you. Whatever it may be, we'd love to hear your thoughts. So don't be shy. Share your memories and experiences with us. Let us know how Fallen Angel resonated with you personally. Your engagement, likes, and shares are always appreciated, and they help us to continue exploring cinematic classics with you. So, whether you were born in the same year as the movie's release or discovered it later in life, we'd love to hear from you. Let's start a conversation and explore the enduring impact of Fallen Angel